Hello, and welcome once again to Acquire English Live. This is episode 11. My name is Adam. I'm here once again with Tuan. Tuan, what's happening today? Uh, nothing much, just the usual. Usual, usual, right. So don't forget, this is our uh, Acquire English Live, but we also have uh, our normal Acquire English lessons uh, that to work on your speaking, listening, pronunciation. Um, remember that when you're learning a new language, it's not just about gaining information. You should be training to use this as a skill. So the, the videos we have and the courses we have on Udemy and Skillshare are there for you to, uh, to gain this skill of speaking English. Remember, it's not just about knowledge. But these ones here are a little bit looser, where Tuan and I just talk a little bit. You can get experience um, a bit more natural conversation. So in today's lesson, we're talking about getting out of town, getting out of the city. Now, Tuan and I both live in Japan and live in, in big cities. So how often do you get out of the city, Tuan? This year, not so much, but right. usually, on a usual year, maybe a couple of times a year. Right. Yeah. Obviously with uh, COVID-19, it's not a ton of traveling happening, but uh, what types of places do you like to go when you get, when you get out of the city? Um, I actually live a little further away. So quite near us is uh, there's a place called Hakone, which has lots of hot springs. Right. Right. Yeah. I've been there. It's a, it's a beautiful place. Yeah. It's up in the mountains. Um, there's lots of, yeah. Like I said, hot springs and yeah, kind of get away from the sea. Right, right. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, I moved a couple of years ago into Tokyo, but actually the area of Tokyo I live in is pretty quiet. So uh, I don't feel the need to get out of the city nearly as much as I used to. I used to get really tired and it just felt really refreshing to get out. But now I kind of, uh, I live in a pretty quiet, peaceful area. I don't feel a big need to, to run away from the city and to relax. But yeah, I definitely like that area of Hakone out in the mountains. Hot springs always feel nice. Hoping yeah, people don't there. know, yeah, Japan is very famous for the hot springs. Right. Go right. there for bathing, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it's a most of the time, bit... sorry, go ahead. Yes, most of the time you have to share though. That's the problem. But if you pay a bit of money, you can get your own kind of hot spring. Right, right. I think it's definitely best if you can have your own hot spring in your, uh, in your room or just outside your room. Those are the, yeah. the best places where you can just relax by yourself or even uh, family-wise as well. Obviously, most, most of the other hot springs are uh, with a group or separated, of course, men and women. Not always, but usually separated men and women. But... Uh, yeah, it's nice if you can get your own. Uh, we did that a few years ago. We stayed at a place where we had our own, just own bath outside, right outside the room. It's perfect. perfect. Uh, but yeah, in today's episode, in today's conversation, we're talking about uh, getting out of town and uh, getting out into the, the mountain. So how about we have a quick listen here to today's conversation. What are you up to this weekend? I'm going up into the mountains. With your family? No, on my own. A friend of mine has a cabin and I'm going to borrow it for the weekend. Nice. I wish I had my own cabin. Okay, and let's go ahead and break down that conversation there. So, the first line here, Tuan said. Oh, sorry, it's not coming up. It's not a blank it. screen. Hmm. How about now? Yes, yeah. Uh, what are you up to this weekend? Right, so what are you up to this weekend means what are you doing 
this weekend. So notice here, what are you up to? Just means what are you doing? This can be used for right now. So if you call your friend, you can say, what are you up to? That just means what are you doing? Or you're walking down the street, you ran, run into your friend, what are you up to today, right? We say that quite often, to so be up to, what are you up to? Just means what are you doing? And we can use it for now, or we can use it for the future, okay? And the next line, I'm going up into the mountains. So this can be a little confusing, the up into, of course, as you go into the mountains, you get higher into the mountains. So I'm going up and then into just means kind of deeper, deeper into the mountains, but just means I'm going to uh, an area with mountains basically. So just means I will spend some time at a place in the mountains. I'm going up into the mountains. Okay. And the next line. With your family. With your family means are you going to go with your family? Okay, so of course, in my situation, wife and two little boys. And my line is, no, on my own. So no, by myself. I'm going by myself. This on my own means by myself or alone is also okay. And I next line is, a friend of mine has a cabin and I'm going to borrow it for the weekend. This just means... I'm going to stay at one of my friend's cabin, okay? So my friend, my good friend here has a cabin and he is going to let me borrow it for the weekend. And the last line is? Nice, I wish I had my own cabin. Right, nice, so cool. I want to have a cabin too. I think we would all like to have a cabin, um, but I wish I had my own cabin. And this brings us to our grammar point. We're going to talk about this own today. So let's look at the next part here. So first we'll talk about a friend of mine or a friend of yours. So I said, a friend of mine, that just means one of my friends. So a friend of mine equals one of my friends. So for example, a friend of mine is getting married. Or I could say, one of my friends is getting married. Next example here. My wife and I visited some friends of ours. So my wife and I visited some friends or some of our friends, we could say. And the last one, my brother got into an argument with a coworker of his. So my brother got into an argument with one of his coworkers. There's many different ways we can say here. So for example, a friend of mine or one of my friends, right? A friend of ours or some of our friends, something like that, okay? Let's look at a couple examples here. So we want to change this here in green to use uh, something of mine, his, hers, etc. So number one here says, I'm meeting one of my classmates tonight. Tuan, how would you change this one? I'll give a little bit of time. Yeah, so people listening, yeah, how would you help. change that? So I'm meeting, so we would say I'm meeting a classmate of mine. Of mine, right. I'm meeting a classmate of mine tonight. Okay, or I'm meeting one of my classmates tonight. Okay, the next one we have, one of my relatives is coming to visit, right? And Tuan, what, could you explain this word? What is a relative? A relative is a family member. So it could be a brother, a sister, a cousin, uncle, auntie. Right, right, relative, okay. So one of my relatives is coming to visit. We'll give you a couple seconds here. What do you think, Tuan? So you can see an example at the top. So it's the same structure, a uh, relative. And yeah, same again, of mine. Right. 
a relative of mine is coming to visit. So if you don't want to say it's a cousin or an uncle or an aunt, you could just say a relative of mine is coming to visit. Okay. And the last one we have here, I went on holiday with two of my friends. How about this one, Tom? What does on holiday mean? So for us, uh, we would say on holiday would mean to go somewhere uh, out, usually out of your hometown or sometimes abroad. So taking a plane somewhere. I, right. I guess Americans would say maybe on vacation. Yeah, exactly. I would definitely say I went on vacation with two of my friends. Um, Americans usually use holiday just to mean like a national holiday, a day when generally schools are closed or banks are closed would be a holiday, right? Yeah, maybe we'll just say a day off. A day off, right. right, right. Yeah. So, but in this case, we're talking about um, some sort of trip out of town, right? So again, British English on holiday, we would say went, I went on vacation with two of my friends. So how would we change this last part here? We'll give you a few seconds. This one, be careful. So it's not a, uh, there's right. more than one. So we cannot say a. Uh. So we say two friends. Right, right, right. So we want to keep that too. So I went on holiday with two friends. And it's the same again, yeah. So we could say it was mine before. So yes, of mine. Of mine, right. Sorry, I got a little excited there. So I went on holiday with two friends of mine friends of mine right so our examples we all of them were used mine i guess i didn't realize that but we could of course say of his of hers of theirs uh before we had um some friends of ours a co-worker of his so those situations are also common okay anything to add about this grammar here tuan just add maybe this don't be too yeah, don't, it, this grammar is a little difficult. So yeah, don't be too disheartened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't be afraid to say, I went on holiday with my, with my friends. <laughs> it is completely okay, right? Or, or my relative is coming to visit is, is okay. But this is just another way that you can say it. Um, as you're building uh, your English ability, it's important to be able to say things in different ways or at the very least understand uh, what things in different ways. Uh, that's kind of what fluency really is, really, when we start uh, uh, being able to say things in two or three different ways. That's when your level starts to really uh, increase. So don't worry too much about it, but it's definitely good to be able to do this with various grammar points. Okay, let's look at one more grammar point today. So we had my, his, her, etc. own, right? So in the conversation, Tuan said, I wish I had my own cabin. So my own cabin equals a cabin that is not shared or borrowed, right? And just a few minutes ago, we were talking about uh, hot springs and having a hot spring with your hotel room, right? And we said, you want your own hot spring. It's, it's fine to share, but it's nice to have your own, one that is not shared or not borrowed, okay? So another example here, we had, I want my own room to work in. I don't want to share with my family. So, uh, Right now with uh, the you know, coronavirus is, is going around still, many people are sharing a room, they're working from home, they're going to school from home possibly. So it'd be nice to have your own room to work in instead of being around your noisy family, okay? And the other example we had is the boss has his own parking space, right? He doesn't need to share it. That's his every day. It's his own. Okay. Anything to add there, Tuan? You can think of it as like a private as well. So yeah, I have my private room or my private parking space. Right, right. right. Okay. Now let's look at some of these here. So what we want to do here is add 
my own, his own, her own, sorry we didn't change this, my own, my or, his or, her, etc. own, something, right? Okay. So how about number one here, Tuan? I don't work for other people. I have, give a few minutes to think about. So I don't work for other people. I have what? So if you're thinking about work, who do you work for? So you usually work for a company or a business. So we can say, I have my own business right. or my own company. Right. I have my own business, right? Sorry. My own business, right? So it's mine. It's again, a good way that Tuan just said is it's private. It's mine. I don't share it. Is that okay. So I don't work for other people. I have my own business. How about number two, Tuan? He doesn't rent. He has what? So thinking about where do they live? What do you rent? So you rent maybe an apartment or a house or a place. So you can say he has his own house, mm -hmm. his own apartment, his own place. But yeah, his own house is fine his own house, his own apartment, exactly. So he doesn't rent, he has his own house, means he is the owner of the house, right? So of course, he has his, I have my, okay? And the last one, my wife takes a long time getting ready in the morning, I wish I had. Okay. Is this true, Tuan? Yeah, she takes a long time. Mm. We would never tell our wives that, but <laughs> we yeah. will share that. We'll share that with you watching here today. Okay. So my wife takes a long time getting ready in the morning. I wish I had. So thinking about where does she get ready? Mm. So usually the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I wish I had my own bathroom. I wish I had my own bathroom, right? Or I wish she had her own bathroom would also work yeah. in this situation mm. as well. Is that okay? So again, when we want to talk about something is not shared or borrowed, we often use my own, his own, her own, their own, just like we did here. Okay, anything else to add here, Tuan? Yeah, I think a common mistake, people don't use the own. So right. it's not common. So yeah, so people say, I have my house, I have my business. Mm -hmm. It sounds a little strange and you know that, okay, they haven't really covered this point. But yeah, just to be careful with that. Yeah, the own is very important. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I hear a lot of my students say this. Uh, maybe they share they share a car with their family and they say, I want my car. So if you say, I want my car, well, you, you have your car, it's your car. So that's okay. You have to say, I want my own car, meaning I don't want to share it. That's the main point in this one here. You okay. All right. So thank everyone once again for watching. Uh, Again, we've gone through 11 episodes here already. I hope people are enjoying these. And uh, don't forget about our other lessons. We've got them on our YouTube page. We've got them on our Facebook page and our Facebook group. And of course, don't forget about uh, the courses we have on Udemy and Skillshare to improve your listening, speaking, and pronunciation, just overall English ability. And don't forget to just practice, practice, practice. That's uh, key part of getting better at any language. Anything to add today, Tuan? Uh, you can find this lesson on the YouTube, I think. Maybe it's on the Facebook, but yeah, you can see the, do you remember the name of the, the, the video? 
a place um, of my own. This, yeah, this this video is. Uh, I wish I had my own. I wish I had yeah, my own so cabin. I believe. Yeah. Have a look for that. Yeah, go on YouTube. Yeah, have a look at our channel and yeah, look for yeah. I wish I had my own. Right. You right. Can practice. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is a video that you can practice along with. And again, when you practice that and you get those kind of example sentences from the conversation and you practice those over and over, uh, that, that's where you'll start to see improvement. That's where you'll start to remember it. That's where you'll start to just use the grammar without realizing it. And that's, that's what we want. That's what acquiring uh, a language is. It's not memorizing the grammar and then in your head calculating what the proper sentence structure should be. Uh, we want it just to come out naturally. And uh, that's why we've created these videos uh, to get that sort of just naturally coming out of your mouth and zero thinking. That's not what we want. When, when Tuan and I are talking as native speakers, we're not thinking you know, about what grammar we need to use. We've, we've done this. We've repeated it over and over and over since we're kids. So it's obviously natural. But uh, when we learn a new language, that repetition helps us just come out fluently. And that's what we need. So please practice. Okay. So that does it for episode 11. Thank you so much. And we will see you next time. Bye.